Thank you guys very much. So now we move into actually one of my very favorite parts of the whole program that we call the assembler doing their best. And this is where a member of our community gets to come up and share a personal story about the way that he or she is making an impact in the world. So I'd like to introduce James Whitker to tell us about how he's doing his best. Good morning. How's it going, everybody? That's interesting to see the room from this uh, vantage point. Um, anyone else ever feel kind of frustrated about the world? <laughs> you know, things like war, poverty, injustice, racism, but maybe feel kind of like, you know, powerless to do anything about it? Um, I used to feel pretty frustrated following the news and uh, I felt kind of isolated. I think that I talked the ears off a lot of friends about religion and politics. I might still do that, actually. Um, that at a certain point, I realized that um, you know, it doesn't really do much good to bemoan and complain about stuff if, if I wasn't actually trying to do something. And so I kind of went against the grain. For me at the time, I sought out other people who are trying to work for change. I started showing up for stuff, asking, you know, how can I get involved? What can I do to help? Um, this was like local and national stuff. And pretty soon, uh, long story short, I found myself, you know, phone banking for different causes and candidates and um, walking picket lines with workers who are being denied fair treatment and um, showing up and speaking at some city council meetings about these issues. You know, economic justice is, is something that, uh, um, that I pay attention to. There are a lot of people in our local economy who are really screwed over and who could use people to speak up for them. Um, a group of us have been trying to protest the fact that in this city, as in many others, it has become routine for unarmed people of color to be shot by the police with virtually no consequences. Some of them I think about um, a good deal is climate change, speaking of large, overwhelming problems. Um, the more you know about it, the scarier it is. So I joined a group called Citizens Climate Lobby, which um, meets with, with chapters all over the world. We meet with local, we meet with um, elected representatives to advance a plan that, uh, build consensus for a plan that climate scientists and economists agree may be the only way to cut emissions in the short amount of time that's left to do so. Um, there's some other things, but I, I got a time limit. Um, Early on, it was through the, the Unitarian Universalist that I discovered this thing called humanism, um, a non-theistic philosophy of reason and compassion. Um, and this, this made a lot of sense to me. Um, there's an inspirational quote that I just happen to have been hearing a lot lately, which you might be familiar with. Uh, How wonderful it is that no one need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. And I think that's really true, and it's really nice. And I. When I hear that, I can't help but remember that the idealistic young girl who wrote that in her diary was then murdered by Nazis. I just think the world makes more sense uh, if you don't have to believe that there's a divine plan or have faith that things will just work out. But to me, that makes it more important to do what I can. The fact that, as Carl Sagan said, there's no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves means that we're the ones who are responsible. And you know, I feel like we live in a country where we have some freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Um, and um, you know, I think we take that for granted sometimes because a lot of people don't have that. Uh, so what, per what difference can one person really make? Fair question. Um, I don't have grand personal accomplishments to brag about. Um, but I can tell you what I've learned, which is that when people come together, things Things happen. Change can happen. Um, in the last year, the, the governor of California signed a car wash worker bill, which is something that um, gives some, some disadvantaged workers a little bit more dignity, treats them a little bit more like human beings. This is something that happened because our economic justice groups all over the state worked on this and made noise about it. Um, minimum wage ordinances here in LA and in Santa Monica, they're going to um, you know, lift a few families out of poverty and, and uh, help fight economic inequality. 
Citizens Climate Lobby, we're working on it. Um, it. The group has more than doubled in just the last 12 months. And there are even some Republican legislators who are having conversations about this. And these things, uh, these things are happening, you know, not because not of what any single person does or has done, but because people care and come together and show up and won't shut up. I've learned that a worldview supported by reason and evidence is something that the world really needs more of. Um, but I, it's not, I don't think it's really enough for me. I think that it also needs to be informed by some moral courage and yes, love and justice. Justice, uh, this guy posing with a goofy looking fan uh, Dr. Cornell West says justice is what love looks like in public. And I think that's true whether you're a Christian or an atheist or a Muslim or, or whatever. Um, justice is what we, what we try to work toward in this one life we know we have because what alternative do, do we really have? We have to, on an increasingly populated, fragile, and interconnected pale blue dot, we have to either live together as brothers and sisters or perish as fools. I think um, in our, our, our culture, like our cars and our jobs and everything, it, it tends to sometimes make us feel isolated and disconnected. But the, the, uh, the, when people come together, things, amazing things really can happen. And another word for people coming together is community, something which I'm looking at right now. This is a, a, a community that has um, uh, already accomplished so much in, in building community and connecting people with service projects that help others. Um, last month, by the way, we, oh, hey. We did something new and different last month. A bunch of us from Sunday Assembly um, went to an interfaith peace march. We joined several hundred others from churches, synagogues, and mosques uh, in marching for religious freedom and tolerance and nonviolence, and it was cool because we got to show up and say, hey, you know, we're not religious, but we do support people putting aside their differences and working for common values, and a few people were like, hey, Sunday Assembly, I might have to check that out. That sounds interesting. So, um, anyway, I think that this community in its own way has already changed the world, and I just wonder what more we can do together I'm interested in hearing what you think. Thanks for listening. <laughs>